Just as I stood up beside the bed, something pushed me back down. I was screaming and crying. Oh, shoot. Stop, just think about that. To anger this <laughs>
There was something moving in the brush. Okay. I started to think that it was the trick of the light since the sun was setting in. It was getting to the part of the day when tree stumps look like deer. And I knew I would have to he move. He was tripping. I figured that he was tripping. I right? might as well just pack up since I still had to get down off the shale and back to the pine tree where I had planned to throw a tarp and slip. At this point, why are you I sleeping in the woods? The doctor say that it was overcast now. Again, the creepy experience isn't that there's something obviously wrong. It's that everything is so completely normal that what I would expect to work, I alone. About this time, too, a fog rolled into the valley, which the combination of overcast weather conditions, sunset, and a ground fog coming up in the wet, wet valley signaled that it was definitely time to leave. I checked my safety and put the caps on my glass and reached up to take my orange flag. Mm -hmm. But the moment that I grabbed the flag, the dread came. And that's the only way that I can describe it. The woods went from animals going home to sleep to full on, you're screwed. The movement had attracted what I could only describe as a thousand invisible eyes, which all turned in unison as they noticed it. You ever wonder what a deer feels like in the headlights? Well, this is it. But then, I heard children. I heard children laughing. But not teenagers, not adults, and definitely not women. But full-on five-year-old kids just laughing like they caught a firefly or something. I don't know, man. I, it's something about kids that make it so scary. Like if you heard in, in the middle of the night, you hear kids laughing. That's weird, man. Just think about it. In the middle of the woods? Why is four or five-year-old five kids in, in the woods for? I had hiked in five miles the previous day through the woods and put two more down today when I woke up to get to this spot. And I distinctly hear children laughing during what I can only describe as the most creepy moment that I've ever had in the valley that I know is completely unoccupied. Having stared at it for the last four hours or so, I wouldn't be by there by myself. I'm I know that. I'm sure that my feet only touched the shale three times getting I would not be out there by myself. I don't know why I he by himself. A ton of noise doing it too. At this point, I just didn't really care though. And I grabbed the pack and my flashlight and absolutely full-on fucking rocked it to the next hilltop. I killed my light halfway up the hill too and went to the top of the hill where I just threw down a tarp and unrolled my phone and there. I just sat all night watching the hill that I just came from. Mm. Uh, ads. In late September of 1979, my husband, our six year old daughter, and I, well, we moved to Mesa, Arizona to be closer to his family. We quickly found an affordable two bedroom home. Uh, so now you're talking about the female. It was perfect for the three of us. It was sort of a, a fourplex, and it seemed like a nice place for the first month that we were there. But that all changed just before Halloween. It all started innocently enough. My 24th birthday was arriving in about two weeks. My mum always likes to send me a birthday card early, and this had always been the habit. And that year was no exception. When I got the mail that day, there was a card from my mum, and inside the card was some sort of birthday. I was actually pretty tickled to receive the mail, since I had been wanting a little eyeshadow duo that I had seen in the grocery store a few nights earlier. In those days, our money was pretty tight, as I hadn't found a job yet. So I decided to hop on my bike and dash up to the store before my daughter got out of school that day. Mm. Before I left, though... I wrote a note for my husband to let him know where I was going. Okay. And my husband sometimes was able to stop by the house for lunch and that, so he was a computer service technician, and he traveled all over the Phoenix Valley. And if he happened to be near the house at lunchtime, he would just drop in and stuff. Yeah, get some nookie. So I set the note on the kitchen table and drew an arrow on it, which pointed to the car. I set the card up with ornate covering showing. And this card was especially pretty, as it had a birthstone set in the center of a flower on the cup. I set it up to show that, and then I left. I returned about half an hour later, and my husband wasn't there, but 
Well, I saw that he had been. At least, that's what I concluded by what I saw on the table. The card was flipped over and upside down, and the part of the card visible now was on the back side, with mm. the part that displayed the price facing forward. Okay. I was sorry that I missed seeing my husband with this. I thought he was really clever in letting me know that he had been there by flipping the card on the table. When he arrived home at the end of his work day, I told him how I was sorry that I had missed him when he stopped in for lunch. But he didn't know what I was talking about, and apparently... Yeah, I'm going to watch this for 20 minutes now. Hold that. It's getting good. That really freaked me out because I made such a production of setting the card up to show the It was the getting story. bad. So, so there was no room in my mind to doubt myself. And finally, though, I told myself that I must have somehow flipped the card over myself or something. I mean, I just had to tell myself this to be able to sleep that night. A week went by with no other strange happenings. And then, lo and behold, another spooky thing occurred. I was home alone doing some housework, and I was washing dishes when I realized that I needed to go and pee. But when I got back to the kitchen, I saw a, a really strange sight. My drinking glass was turned upside down on the side of the sink. And I knew I hadn't left it there. And a chill ran up my spine. And then the strange occurrences became more pronounced. I would leave a room and return to find an object turned upside down on a regular basis. It was uh -uh. so odd uh -uh. because... I would literally leave a room and return within seconds sometimes. And there was just no way that anyone could have come and gone without me seeing it. Mm. It was a total impossibility, in fact. But the worst part was that no one wanted to believe me, too. But these things only seemed to occur to torment me. One day, though, my sister-in-law, Cindy, was over. We were sitting at the kitchen table at the time, and... I was cooking us some uh, macaroni and cheese or something. We also had a pot of coffee going. Anyway, as soon as I had finished telling her about all the weird things, she did something crazy. Cindy said aloud, If you're there, show yourself. And at the instant the words were gone from her mouth, the electricity died. Mm -mm. The macaroni cheese stopped cooking. Oh. And the Mr. Coffee shut up. And of we course. ran outside. Yeah, I would we too. We went to the back of the fourplex to where the breaker box was, and we looked inside the box, but no breakers were tripped off. I need to also add that no one was around outside that day but us. Mm. We called the electricity company to send out a repairman, and when he arrived, he quickly found the problem and fixed it. We asked him what the problem had been, and he told us that a pertinent part was missing from the breaker box, and he just replaced it. But that one really spooked Cindy and me because we had gone immediately outside when the electricity died. And no one had been outside, and even if a human had done it, what were the odds of it occurring just when Cindy had asked the presence to show itself? Yeah, that, uh... After this incident, I was beginning to become terrified. At first, the entity seemed almost playful. Turning objects upside down seemed quite harmless, if I'm being honest. That playing games with a breaker box seemed more powerful and cunning and somewhat sinister. One rainy morning after my daughter left for school, I decided to go back to bed for a while. My husband had gone to work early that morning and I wasn't too surprised though when I heard him coming up the sidewalk with his keys jangling. I heard him open the front door and come into the apartment and I decided to keep the covers over my head. I was pretending to be asleep and I was going to wait until he came into the room and said something before I greeted him. Silly, I know, but I heard him come into the room and he was standing by the bed. I could hear him breathing and yet he never spoke. But finally, I whipped the covers off my head and yelled boo and there was no one there. At this point, I was petrified. I was getting up out of the bed with the intention of putting on my clothes as quickly as possible to get out of the house, but just as I stood up beside the bed, something pushed me back down. I was screaming and crying oh, myself, shoot. but this thing about that. to anger this thing and it pushed me even harder and more forcibly. Yeah, that's I scary feared right I would now. be crushed and nobody would even understand my death or how it had occurred. But just uh -huh. then, when 
I felt I couldn't take any more pressure and live, it stopped. Just as quickly as it had all happened, it was just over. It kept pushing oh. me down. Well, I got dressed and drove to my mother-in-law's house for the day. And I was yeah. not going to stay alone in that house anymore. Yeah, I would have well, did the same not thing. That day anyway. I had begun to have these awful nightmares of a dismembered body too. I dreamt that our house was on a patch of land that had been used as a Native American burial ground. The dreams were confusing because not only did I dream of the burial grounds, but I also dreamt of a cannibalistic man dressed as the proverbial cowboys of the Old West. The nightmares were confusing and revolting and evil in a way that I was utterly horrified by. In fact, the nightmares grew so dark and gruesome that I began to dread going to sleep. Soon after these experiences, I got a job that would keep me away from the house during the day. I worked weekdays from 6am to 2pm and that was perfect for me because our daughter got out of school at 3pm. Therefore, I would hardly ever be alone in the house, and neither would she, more importantly. Mm. My husband would drive her to school before we went to work, and I'd always be there to pick her up after school, and I liked that just fine. Mm. I would have did the same thing. At my new job, and there was such a feeling of elation to be away from the frightening things that were going on inside my apartment that I had to catch myself. I even wondered if the entity was upset that I wasn't there to torment. One day, though, this presence still managed to give me a spook. I had just picked up my daughter from school, and we were going over to my mother-in-law's house, but my daughter wanted to change her clothes first. We stopped by our apartment, and I went to the bathroom while she changed in her bedroom. As I was washing my hands in the bathroom, I decided to move a little plaque off of the bathroom shelf and put it away. I don't know what it is, but all that I like is either immoral, I'm thinking illegal, too hard, and it's making it and seem real. Day, like the plaque just made me feel disgusted. That's a good story to make you. Message. So I took it off. It's the not shelf that scary, but watch this by yourself box. with the headphones on. You will see what I'm the talking shelf about. to be dusted as there was a clean line where the plaque had rested. I decided to leave the dusting until I returned home from my mother-in-law's house. And the time passed quickly as we visited with my in-laws and. We finally returned home, and I was glad that I made it home before my husband because I still needed to dust the bathroom shelf before starting dinner. I got some cleaning supplies from under the kitchen sink and went into the bathroom, and I was still frozen in shock at what I saw. There sat the plaque, I exactly where it had been before I had moved it and put it away. It had even been set meticulously back the way it had been, sitting perfectly in line with all the dust around it. I rushed my daughter out of the house into the car and I drove straight to a payphone and called my mother-in-law. She sent my brother-in-law over to stay with us until my husband came home. It didn't really help that much to have someone else there because I was just utterly terrified of being in this apartment at this point, which eventually resulted in us leaving. That May, we got our tax refund and we used that money to move quickly. We moved away from Mesa and got an apartment in Phoenix. Luckily, whatever that thing was didn't follow us to our new home, and for that, I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. I will too. So that was the story number this one. This isn't going to be your, your typical paranormal story, but it's probably the most frightening one that I've been to in ten years, simply because of the humor that so, the call came out as a simple suspicious person at a large nursing home with not that many more details. And myself and a buddy showed up to find a woman just waiting out front next to her vehicle. But the vehicle was off and she carried a baby with her. Maybe three years old, but still with those uh, cherubic baby angel cheeks. Hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm going to do part two to, uh, later on today. Um, yeah, I might do the rest of it. They don't the, the tomorrow night or you can say probably around the same time you see this video but hit that like button if you like it and if y'all want to watch this video by yourself like the whole thing without me talking in it the link is in the description thank you for watching